Welcome to Animated Science Chemistry. This time we are looking at types of bonds. So the octet rule states that atoms are stable with eight valence electrons. So last time we talked about how to determine the valence electron of each atom by using the periodic table. So if we look in group 8, these are the noble gases and they are chemically inert because they already have a full shell. They have 8 electrons in their valence shell, so they already satisfy the octet rule. And all the other atoms are going to gain electrons, lose electrons, or share electrons during bonding to achieve 8 electrons in the valence shell. Now the exception to this rule is helium and hydrogen, which only have the first shell and is full with two electrons. So this octet rule is going to lead us into another concept called electronegativity, which is the driving force of an atom to attract electrons in a bond. So the differences in electronegativity between each atom determine the type of bond between atoms. So every atom has a specific electronegativity and the Pauling scale shows relative values for the electronegativities of every atom and is very useful in determining bond types. So in the Pauling scale, we can see some trends in the electronegativity. Electronegativity increases across a period and that's because we're increasing the number of protons, which means we're increasing the number of positive charge, and that's gonna increase the driving force for electrons. You can also see that electron activity decreases down a group, and that is because we are increasing the number of shells, which is increasing the distance from the protons. Therefore, the pull of the electrons is decreasing. So fluorine is going to have the greatest electronegativity and francium is going to have the least electronegativity. Our first type of bond is the ionic bond. The ionic bond is going to occur when atoms transfer electrons. So here's an example. Chloride has a valence electron number of 7. Sodium has a valence electron number of one and chloride is going to steal the electron from sodium to fill its valence electron this makes chloride negative and sodium positive so chloride is an anion and sodium is a cation and both of them have a full valence electron number the Lewis dot structure is a simpler way to visualize this and it shows the same thing chloride stealing the electron from sodium and chloride becoming the anion and sodium the cation. Going back to the Pauling scale, we can see the difference in electronegativities between chloride and sodium, and the difference is 2.1 that tells us that chloride is going to have a stronger pull for the electron than sodium and that is what causes chloride to pull the electron from sodium so all ionic bonds are going to occur with electronegativity differences of 2.0 or more the next bond type is the covalent bond so here in this example we have two chlorine atoms. Both chlorine atoms have a valence electron number of 7 and the covalent bond is going to occur when these atoms share the electrons. So when they become in close proximity they both have the same electronegativity, the same pull, and so they are going to share two electrons creating a single covalent bond and this is going to fill their outer shells with 8 fulfilling the octet rule. So looking at the Lewis dot structure, uh, this shows this pretty clearly. We can see that two electrons are shared in the middle, and if we count those two electrons for both, they both have eight surrounding them. And we symbolize that with a bar in the middle. 
the double bond occurs when we share four electrons. So in this example, we have two oxygen atoms. They both have six valence electrons. And when they bond together, they are going to share four electrons. And this is going to fulfill their octet rule. The Lewis dot structure shows this very clearly. Four electrons are shared in the middle and if we count those four electrons for both of the atoms, they both have eight electrons in their valence shell, and the double bond is symbolized by two bars between the atoms. The triple covalent bond occurs when we have six shared electrons. So in this example, we have two nitrogen atoms, both with five valence electrons. They come together a little bit closer to share three valence electrons. Looking at the Lewis dot structure, we can see this pretty clearly. Six electrons are shared in the middle, and if we count the electrons around each atom, that gives us eight. And then we symbolize the triple bond with three bars in the middle. So there's also two other flavors of covalent bond. We have the polar covalent bond and the nonpolar covalent bond. Here in the polar covalent bond, it is the unequal sharing of electrons. So in this example, we have the chlorine atom again with seven valence electrons, and we have a hydrogen atom with one valence electron. So notice how the hydrogen electron is labeled, is colored green. And so we can see that the chlorine atom is going to hold on to that electron for more time. And the electronegativity difference is going to cause the chlorine atom to unequally share the electron. So going back to the Pauling scale, looking at chlorine and hydrogen and subtracting their electronegativities, we have a difference of 0.9. So this greater electronegativity in chlorine is going to cause it to take the electron for more time. And so polar covalent bonds occur when we have an electronegativity difference of 0.5 through 2.0. This gives partial charges to the chlorine atom and the hydrogen atom, and that is denoted by a lowercase delta. And so chlorine is partially negatively charged and hydrogen is partially positively charged. The nonpolar covalent bond occurs when we have equal sharing of the electrons. Carbon has a valence electron number of four. Hydrogen has a valence electron number of one. All four of these come together and they're going to share those electrons. Because of their electronegativities, they share those equal. So looking at the Pauling scale again, comparing hydrogen and carbon, hydrogen and carbon have an electronegativity difference of 0.4. So this nonpolar covalent bond happens when electronegativity differences are 0.4 or less. So let's look at one more example, and that is the water molecule, which has huge implications for organic molecules in life. So we're gonna check for comprehension here. So the water molecule, the hydrogen and the oxygen has electronegativity difference of 1.4. So what do you think is the type of bond between oxygen and hydrogen? So it is the 
polar covalent bond and they have unequal sharing of electrons. So polar covalent bond, difference of 0 0.5 through 2.0. This causes partial positive hydrogens and partial negative oxygen and this is going to set up a realm for the biological molecules that are going to have to obey this polarity principle. So this has extreme importance for all of biology and life. Looking at the Lewis dot structure, this shows us that hydrogen and oxygen are going to share the electrons. However, this does not show the polarity principle as well. Looking at numerous water molecules, these partial positives and partial negatives are going to have attractions. And this is called a dipole-dipole attraction because the molecule can be considered a dipole. It's got two different poles. And so dipole-dipole attractions are between the water. This also is the case where we have we can drop the, our ions from earlier and we can have an attraction between the partial negative oxygen to the positive charge of the sodium and the partial positive of the hydrogen to the negative charge of the chloride. And that attraction is the ion dipole. The hydrogen bond here is the attraction between molecules, not atoms. So yes, the ions are atoms themselves, but this is an inter intramolecular force. So the hydrogen bond is between molecules. It's not a bond of hydrogen to any other atom. Pretty important distinction. So let's review since we went through that. The octet rule says that atoms are stable with eight electrons in their valence shell and they're going to strive to achieve eight electrons in the valence shell when bonding. The difference in electronegativity is going to determine the type of bond. We looked at three types of bond that occur between atoms, and that is the that is the nonpolar covalent bond, which is equal sharing of electrons and electronegativity difference of zero through zero point four. Polar covalent bond is unequal sharing of electrons, electronegativity difference of zero point five through two point zero, and the ionic bond where atoms transfer electrons with electronegativity difference of greater than two point zero. We also looked at two intermolecular forces, the dipole-dipole force and the ion-dipole force. And this is what is determined as a hydrogen bond, which is the attraction of the partial positive hydrogen in one molecule to a negative atom in another molecule. So this is between molecules. All right, so that does it for the types of bonds. Let me know if you have any questions. Please subscribe for more. Um, we'll see you in the next video.